Mark, you talked about that shroud of secrecy in Albany. What specifically are you prepared to do to do away with four men in a room and a select few making decisions behind closed doors? Well, stop meeting with four men in a room. I mean, the governor sets the tone, and he or she can choose who he or she wishes to meet with. And I, I think the first, uh, the first place to start is to ensure that you're negotiating with members of the legislature, empowering local elected officials and involving resident citizens in decision making. So that's, that's number one. It starts with tone and tenor, and you have to have an understanding of the way in which government's supposed to function, and that is by bringing people into the process, not excluding them. But secondly, we have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. I mean, this governor had uh, a Moreland commission, which was focused on, on corruption until it got too close to his office, and then he said it's his commission, he can get rid of it. Listen, at the end of the day, um, uh, what we learned in the Prococo trial was, uh, was that uh, corruption has, had reached the highest levels of government, and there was an unwillingness by this governor to confront it honestly and openly, and that needs to, that needs to happen. Independent uh, Ethics Commission with real enforcement power. Uh, a little geeky, I'm a bit of a government geek, but even the Open Government, the Commission on, Committee on Open Government needs teeth so that it can enforce the open government standards that we have in the state. And by the way, those standards need to apply not only uh, to local governments, but to the governor and to the legislative branches of government as well. Uh, and then I would say holding, yourselves, uh, uh, holding ourselves uh, uh, more accountable, imp imposing term limits. I've already said that I'd hold myself to two uh, four-year terms, and I'd seek a constitutional amendment to ensure that uh, statewide elected officials could not serve more than two consecutive terms, and that members of the legislature couldn't serve more than uh, 12 years uh, uh, totally. Beyond that, uh, I think there are, uh, there are procurement rules. Uh, I know, again, it's a little geeky, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the decisions uh, that are being made by this governor to spend billions of dollars are made in the in the in, in back rooms uh, where deals are being made with power brokers and donors. Uh, so we need procurement reform. The ones that the comptroller, Tom DiNapoli, has put forward to make perfect sense, greater transparency, greater accountability, greater accessibility. Uh, and I throw my hat to Ray uh, uh, and uh, the members of the assembly minority who, who have been pushing uh, for this database of deals. And I don't think one dollar of economic development money, and I, I use that term loosely, uh, but I don't think one dollar of taxpayer money should be given to anyone uh, unless it is totally disclosed as to how the decision was made, uh, how, how uh, the, uh, the, the, the selection was made, and where the dollars are being spent. And oh, by the way, uh, I think the entirety of the economic development apparatus needs to be paused until we can prove that it isn't corrupted or as corrupted as we believe it is. There have been politicians who have pushed for term limits before. Yeah. They always say there's going to be term limits, but then it hasn't come about, obviously. Yeah, because they're not willing to live by it. I'll, I'll, I'll live by it. At the end of the day, it's a matter of leadership, I think, and setting the tone. And if you come into office saying, these are the things that I intend to do and live by them, to live and govern by example, uh, others will follow. So I start by saying, I will live by that standard, two four-year terms. And Mo, by the way, you noticed uh, during this budget process, the governor put a lot of uh, policies into his uh, budget proposal, things that may or may not have anything to do with the budget, uh, perhaps. And, and one of those things was term limits. Where, where did that end up on the, uh, uh, on, the chopping block, on the chopping block? The accountability of the public, term limits, accessibility, and reforms all fell off to the wayside, and instead we have a document that, uh, quite frankly, doesn't provide tax relief or relief to hardworking taxpayers across the state of New York. Governor Cuomo's uh, Buffalo Billion, it's, we've, we've seen some, some new development, but we've also seen uh, a virtually empty factory and also some, uh, some alleged uh, bribery scandals surrounded by it. How, how do you convince upstate New Yorkers that uh, despite some of the, the bright, shiny new toys that did come with yeah. it, that it's not necessarily in there, it hasn't been good for them? This governor took advantage of the one thing that the, that the people of the western, western New York have never lost, and that's hope. He took advantage of their desire, their hope, your belief that uh, by investing a few dollars of taxpayer money, uh, great and amazing economic development will occur. There have been successes, and we celebrate those, but at the end of the day, um, this process, the, the economic development apparatus, is corrupted by a corros corrosive pay-to-play politics, which has been on trial for the last several months and will be on trial for the next several months, and it reached the highest levels of state government. There is no question about that. What I would say to you, however, is the way that you grow jobs uh, in any region of the state is by driving down the cost and the regulation on businesses and working with local business leaders who've been toiling uh, in our communities, on our main streets, work with our local farmers and others who are working hard every day to help them grow and expand. And at the same time, work with local leaders, regardless of party, to try to uh, uh, de define what economic development goals they have and make sure those things occur. But it starts, by the way, not with the government, of the state of New York taking money 
from hardworking taxpayers to compensate for the fact that the state of New York takes too much money from hardworking taxpayers, but rather drive down the cost. You start with property tax relief, significant, real, meaningful property tax relief, and I'd offer to you make smart investments in the infrastructure necessary to support our, our, our main streets, support our families, and to support small businesses. We have time for one more. One more. A Ron. lot of candidates are talking about medical or marijuana legalization in the state. What is your stance on that? Yeah, and I, there was just, just a study released yesterday that kind of, uh, two studies that uh, over the last uh, week that have come out uh, that suggest perhaps uh, that medical marijuana uh, and the application of medical marijuana might drive, might in fact uh, decrease the use of, uh, of opioid, opiates and, and, um, uh, and that's uh, promising. There's a counterbalance study that suggests that, uh, uh, that that's not the case. I believe uh, uh, certainly the state should be looking at and, and analyzing uh, and evaluating what other states have seen that have made recreational use uh, legal. But I'm uh, of the mindset that uh, medical marijuana is appropriate and the use of marijuana for medical purposes. Um, not that I necessarily want to, this on record, but my, my daughter um, uh, not only is, uh, lives on the autism spectrum, but lives with a, a seizure disorder. We know that for many, living with uh, 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 ailments like that uh, can be benefited. So I do think a healthy uh, use of marijuana in, uh, for medical purposes is absolutely appropriate and needs to be considered. And at the same time, uh, we as a government should be evaluating uh, what's occurred in those other states that have legalized it more broadly. What Mark. minor party lines will you seek? All of them. All of no, them. Uh, <laughs> Working you get the, no, 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 you get the, uh, listen, um, uh, you know, we're realists. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, we'll make our case uh, to, uh, to all, including the Reform Party. Uh, That's the one I'm working on. I knew on. that, yeah. yeah. No, we're making our case to Reform Listen, I, I have for my entire life been a reformer. I, I look at the way government functions and say, why do we do it that way? And by the way, those the, the, the most dangerous answer to any question in government. Well, that's the way we've always done it. So for me, uh, I have always been somebody who believes in true reform and empowering people. Uh, I believe in initiative and referendum. And the Reform Party, I think, uh, uh, embraces uh, those, uh, those principles as well. So I have to go to Thanks, Rochester. Everybody. <laughs> but I appreciate it. I'll be back. Don't worry. I'll be back. Thank